I'm Jasmine Moradi, and you are listening to the Power of Audio, Science and AI. My guest today is my new friend, Margareta Andersson, a passionate woman that thrives on challenges, creativity and positivity. Just like me, she has a true entrepreneurial spirit and loves everything with sound. It was a passion for sound that landed her in the sound architecture industry. In 1996, Margareta started the sound production company Pretty Production, producing sound within the fields of advertisement, corporate films and sound branding. In 2009, the production company became an integrated brand in the multi-award winning agency Lexter Sound Design, also started by Margareta. The agency has since November 2020 been acquired by Ethnokline, Klein, a part of EFRI. Lexter was established around the challenges of working with sound and scent design in the public environment. Now, more than a decade later, she and her team have successfully been working with sound concepts and has made installations for everything from shopping malls to banks and offices. Lexer has also created software such as Lexer Sound System Twan. Margareta has an advertising communication degree from Paris School of Communication. And on top of that, she has also studied behavioral and positive psychology and has a co-certification from Academia Coachana, which is coach people within the field of business, entrepreneurship, and leadership. Margareta is now the section manager of FT Klein, a Scandinavian company with dedicated experts in engineering, architectural, music, and academia. In this episode, Margareta and I are going to discuss the ins and outs of sound architecture. With that, Margareta, I welcome you and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Congratulations to being acquired. How does it feel so far and how is it going? It feels uh, wonderful. It is a little bit hectic at the moment, um, but we're really happy uh, we are now integrated to something that is bigger. Uh, we have over 120 new colleagues in Efteklang, which is amazing. So now we can offer the, the whole world a really good quality sound environment. So we are um, happy, really, really happy, exciting. I'm so glad to hear this. And I've read that you love everything about sound. So now I'm interested to know when and what was your earliest memory of music and what is it about sound that fascinates you so much? Um, that is a, a, in one way a difficult question uh, because when I was really young, I was more passion to drawing. Um, but it, it, I think I was passion to a lot of things that would stimulate me. But my earliest memory uh, wasn't music, it was actually uh, voices, mm. tone of voices. And um, the first uh, music and song that I fell in love with, well, first of all, I have bigger sisters, so I was like sneaking under their bed when they were doing the Beatles and Monkeys and those kind of <laughs> bands. But uh, that was, that, I, I wasn't really into that, but the first, um, melody that actually took me uh, was um, an old song that was like remixed and it's been remixed over and over again but uh, there was a woman sing singing and the song was one uh, one way ticket to the blues mm. and um, the melody is what it is uh, but I think her voice uh, was that actually grabbed my heart uh, so that is uh, my first really connection I think I was around seven years old or something um my parents uh, because that that record went on and on and on and on and on uh, repeat <laughs> repeat repeat yeah so yeah then how does it feel to listen to that uh, to that song and voice today i did before our our conversation now because uh, i needed to fresh up my memory what was the name of the woman i was singing i couldn't remember it and so i i went on on youtube and i listened to it and it makes it makes me smile. It makes me happy. Um, it does, yeah. Yeah, 
and you and I, we do have a lot in common, actually. Uh, the entrepreneurial spirit, we love sound, we thrive challenges and creativity and positivity. And also, yeah. we both studied at Bar School of Communication. Mm -hmm. So I want to know, what was it then in your inner motivational drive and curiosity as a girl that brought you to where you are today, becoming mm -hmm. an entrepreneur and working with sound architecture? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean... It's a lot of years between when you and me went to Paris. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it is. Uh, but I think um, I, I, when I was young, I was always like searching for something. Um, and as, as older you go, you, you realize what your, what you, where, your, where your fire is and, and what are you looking for. Um, I think it's more about a journey that you need to, to start to, to walk one direction and then that wasn't the right direction and then you find another direction and if you're open-minded there is opportunities along the road and um, so i started first to work with economics mm. um yeah and there, there was no fire in that so but that that experience uh, uh, is good for me to have uh, during my 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 journey uh, especially when i'm open up my own business and everything so uh, but that wasn't my fire. And uh, then just an opportunity put me in, in a position where I start to work uh, in an advertising bureau. And, uh, and suddenly I felt like I belong. Mm. So that's when I start to go to Paris and all of those kind of things. And then I went abroad and I was working uh, quite many years abroad in different countries. And when I came back home, uh, I just realized that my fire is, uh, it is on the target, it is on what I want to do, but what's more, 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 more important is my personal values. Mm. So for me to, to run my business is an opportunity to, um, to decide myself, who am I gonna work with? Uh, what kind of personalities are, are those people that I'm gonna work with, both when it comes to colleagues and customers and suppliers or whatever, and uh, to feel free to, to, to be able to make my own decisions mm. uh, creates freedom in me. And when I feel free, I feel also very safe. Uh, money hasn't been my, my big uh, thing. Mm. Uh, you older you go, money gets more important because you realize there is an ending coming. Um, so, so money is like, of course, money is important, but, but my motivation is not connected with money it's connected to to values uh and people relations yeah very interesting now now I feel long we answer sorry <laughs> <laughs> no it's the perfect i was just gonna say that i feel more connected to you because it's it's i i feel the same okay uh, and, and you've also done, during your career, started three successful companies, uh, yes. which have two been in sound design. So mm -hmm. let's start uh, with the pretty production. Yes. Um, how do you start it? And mention a couple of success stories and learnings along the way. Mm -hmm. Well, the, there's, again, uh, there is like um, circumstances, opportunities. Um, uh, I came. I came home from my my uh, my years abroad uh, because I realized that I was like I had one foot in two different places and I had to make a choice. Like, am I going to stay abroad or am I going to go back home? And then uh, my decision was to go back home and to start to work with with uh, advertising in Sweden again. And what were you doing? Sorry, what were you doing abroad? Uh, abroad, I was working uh, in uh, with marketing. Mm. and advertising and uh, also building relationships mm. uh, with different companies when it comes to sale and marketing. So, uh, uh, so when I came home, I was like, okay, I, had I never worked with radio. Uh, I've been working at, at that point, I've been working with um, television and other bits and pieces when it comes to advertising, but I, I never touched the uh, radio. So, uh, when I came home, I'd realized that, okay, if I'm gonna be good at project, to be a creative project leader in advertising, uh, I also need to know more about the media radio. So and radio was quite new in, in commercial radio was very new in Sweden in that time. Uh, we were second last after Albania actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. 
So then I started to work in, in a radio station. Um, and after just like a couple of weeks, I realized that I thought that radio in that time would be like dynamic, explosive. I could see like, like a really good newspaper, you know, people running around busy and, you know, to be extremely creative. Uh, but it wasn't, it was very hierarchy, which was like really sad. Uh, it was an Australian company. And, um, um, but at, at that point, I think I was three months in that station. But in that point, I realized that it doesn't make sense at all. So, because if I brought in a customer, uh, there was two people in there making copy to do uh, copy for the advertising. But the voices, the salespeople or marketing people were the voices on the advertising. Mm. So I ending up standing in a studio uh, doing recording for the big hotel chain Sheraton. <laughs> I just felt like this is insane. I, I'm not the voice of Sheraton. They need to, you know. Uh, and, 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 and in that time, there was like... Um, sound uh, bureaus that was working with big customers uh, like McDonald's and those huge advertising when it comes to radio. Mm. Uh, and then there was like in-house production at the stations. So there was like a market in between the one that had a good budget and the one that didn't have a budget at all. So I just thought like, what if I could you know, penetrate that market I know nothing about uh, sound technology. I know nothing about uh, copywriting, but I know advertising, building a relationship and, uh, and finding customers. And at that station, this is a really long story, but at that station, there was a person working with, with as a copywriter. Uh, he was a really funny, uh, dynamic guy. We didn't know each other very well, but I, his name is Ivan. So I went into him and I said, like, this sucks. Uh, I'm going to leave. I'm going to open up my own business. Uh, do you want to join? And he said, I'm in. So, um, so that's how we started. Uh, I had a friend that had like a really old small shop in the center of Stockholm. It was like um, a 32 or 33 square meter. I called him up and I said, like, hey, you, you don't use your store. Can I, can I rent it? And he said, here is the key. So we start to build our own studio. Uh, so that's how we started uh, in a small milk shop. It was like an old milk shop. That's mm. where we started. Mm. And uh, yeah, and we found customers and we start to build up uh, uh, our brand and the company. And um, we did, we, him and me had like a, a big difference of... Um, looking at uh, having your own business because if you start your own business you need to be ready to work yeah a lot yeah. and earn zero to begin yeah. with <laughs> uh, so what, what happened is that i bought him out he stayed uh, mm -hmm. uh, and had a salary and uh, from there we we started to do like um, advertising for i think we were lucky because we found a couple of companies that were young uh, and small, uh, so we could build a brand through radio advertising, which mm -hmm. gave us the, the market. And, uh, and uh, we started to grow quite uh, fast. Uh, and then the rest is history. Yeah.